Hello YouTube, PsychoBob back again with another 3D print project. I've been promising a new project for quite some time now, but things got delayed for various reasons and I even had to completely change the project at one point. I won't go into too much of the reasons why, but if you're interested in reading what the original project was going to be, and also why it was changed, in the description I have a link to a post on my website regarding this. Getting back to this project, it's been a while and I was supposed to have completed it almost a month and a half ago, but there were various setbacks and delays along the way. Before any diehard fans point out any mistakes in the model, I admit myself, this is not 100% accurate. I needed to alter the design slightly in order to make it work at this scout or make it more affordable. As normal, I have a full project post on this available on my website which will contain more information than this video will, including things that I would have done differently if my budget for the project was higher. Again, there's a link in the description to this. Right, enough of that, and on to the main video. I consider myself to be a bit of a Dead Space fan and I've enjoyed the game franchise quite a lot and wanted to make something from the game. Previously I made a Dead Space rig helmet as an early project for a friend, but I wanted to make something for myself too. I also wanted to incorporate some movement and set myself a bit of a challenge, so I eventually settled on the bench from the game, more specifically the bench from Dead Space 2. As with any project, I start with a 3D design and some reference material. The bench would need some vertical movement as the bench activates and then the two side panels would swing down from their vertical state to the horizontal one. Once the requirements were understood, I then began the modelling process. I reworked the model a few times because I thought the design would either not be reliable enough, too expensive, or some components needed for the design were unavailable at the scale I was working at. Once the design was about 70% complete, I then moved to work on the electronic side of things as this would affect the last 30% of the model. So I needed to come back and finish the model after I had the electronic side more finalised. I knew I would need a microprocessor in order to control the OLED screen I was incorporating into the project, so I opted for an Arduino in the end. I used an Arduino Uno and a breadboard to prototype the project and it all seemed to work pretty well. The Arduino code came to just over 1000 lines in the end and the Arduino language was fairly easy to work with. As with any breadboard prototyping, the electronics were fairly bulky and this was going to be too big for the 3D print. Normally I just use some stripboard when I want to make the project more permanent which shrinks the size quite significantly, but even then this was going to be a bit too big. So I decided to go down a PCB route which would allow me to shrink things even further. I used a program called EagleCAD to lay out my schematic and board layout, exported the design and then sent this off to a PCB company who produced the board and sent it back to me in the post. The results were absolutely fantastic. I then finished the model off now that I had a better handle on the size of the electronics that was going to be inside the model. With this, the 3D model was finally completed, the electronics were completed, so I placed the order and the parts from Shapeways arrived after a week or two. As with any 3D printed parts, the first thing to do is clean the parts and remove any excess powder. Then comes the worst part of the project, sanding. Lots and lots of sanding. Once this was done, I then used some styrene to add in some extra parts and then I began painting. I weathered the piece with some silver paint, which on hindsight may be a little bit over the top, but I still quite like the end result. Finally, I assembled the piece, fitted all the electronics and I had the finished product. So it felt like quite a long road, but I'm happy with the end result. The model, when in the inactive position, is 13cm high, 13.5cm wide and 9.5cm deep. When in the active position, it is 14.5 centimeters high, 20.5 centimeters wide, and it's also 9.5 centimeters deep. It weighs around 240 grams in its entirety. The button on the front changes the bench from the active and inactive positions. The button on the right changes the screen forward to the next available, and the button on the left changes the screen to the previously available screen. Well, that's it for me. I'll leave you with some footage of the finished product. Thanks for watching and don't forget to visit my website for more information and for other projects.